Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, we've been having many mighty words of prophetic here. God has been really showing us what's happening and what's about to happen. We certainly don't want to lose sight of those things. The Lord is calling the whole body of Christ to fulfill and fall into a position of an apostolic ministry, apostolic body of Christ, preparing an apostolic people. And in that arena, God is wanting His children to walk in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit in every area. The Word says that in my name you'll cast out devils and lay hands on the sick and speak with new tongues and raise the dead and heal and all kinds of things. Cleanse the leopards. There's many spiritual leprosies in the body of Christ. People get spiritual leprosy by coming against the authorities and the offices of the body of Christ. I've seen it happen. God is cleaning up His body right now in a great and mighty way. He's taking those who are claiming to be believers and bringing them to a position where they become disciples. Hello? Because a disciple is a doer. Amen? Until we fulfill that other position where eventually we become apostles, which those are sent. Hello? Is everybody with me? Praise God. God is bringing up an apostolic church in a powerful and mighty way. And there are things that are happening that you and I have got to agree with what God is doing. Amen? We can't just walk away and play. It's not a time for play anymore. Everyone is in here has just seen and heard about a city being destroyed. Hello? There is no time for games. No time for games. God is moving rapidly. He's excelling. The time is moving. Everything is moving rapidly because time is running out. Amen? And He's called us for a specific time and purpose right now. A specific time and purpose. Wherever we're at, we need to witness to people. We need to ask them if they know Jesus, no matter what it is. Because it would be a bummer if that person died and went to hell and you had an opportunity to say something to that person. Amen? So no matter where you are, at your workplace, whatever it is, ask them if they know Jesus. It's real simple. If you know Jesus, it's either yes or no. And you can, simple, next verse is, you want to go to hell or heaven. Amen? It's real simple. Remember, the Pope that we have right now is a temporary Pope. Of course, all men are temporary. The next pope will be the false prophet. He'll be the Antichrist. This is how close we are. It's how quickly things are happening. We're in a powerful time and a powerful season to be alive right now. And we've been chosen. God has called us. There's no coincidence that we're here. There's no coincidence about the things of God and drawing us and pulling us. He's pulling his children back out of darkness. Some of them won't stay. They'll still want to serve darkness and some will stay and want to change. Amen. Would you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. How many of y'all been blessed for the last couple of nights? Amen. Praise God. Of course, we're blessed every night. Amen. But we had a special visitor, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Is everybody there? Oh, praise God. In verse 14, would you read it with me? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again. That's a very, very powerful statement. And to maintain and to get into this place where God wants to use and move through His people, there's got to be a place where there's death. Now, yes, there's a, 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 an area where we must die daily, amen? But then there's an area what we must do, and there's something that our sister said, Sister um, Holiday, shared something that just really hit me, and, and we've talked about this and everything, and it's called killing your past. You cannot walk in the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost until you kill your past. Is everybody with me? You must kill. That's your responsibility to kill your past. You cannot, I don't care what you have. I don't care if you pray in tongues, you're a worshiper, you get revelations. I don't care if you've cast out demons. You can never fulfill and walk in the true power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that God has given you until you kill your past. Is everybody with me? Look at this now. <clears throat> Go to verse uh, 16. Therefore, come on, read it with me. From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him thus no longer. Even Jesus according to the flesh, you are not to acknowledge anymore. Do you understand that? 
Because Jesus is no longer in the flesh. He was God who came in the flesh, right? And He's back sitting next to the right hand of the Father where all things are under Him. And He intercedes for me and you. So we don't no longer acknowledge that office of Jesus in the flesh. We acknowledge the price and the exchange of the cross that He made for us. Is everybody with me? But we do not acknowledge no more. We, we read the Word as an example of how He walked, right? But we don't acknowledge in that arena according to Him in the flesh anymore because He isn't. He's up at the right hand of the Father. So even that... You know, there, let me share something with you. There are still, there are still many places that are still, the only thing they want to tell about is salvation. Because that's all they know. Salvation, salvation, salvation. And salvation, and salvation, and salvation. Salvation is the greatest miracle, isn't it? Praise God. But there's more than that because people can lose their salvation. So if you don't go beyond salvation, people can lose it. Because the Bible says the devil comes to steal, doesn't he? Kill and destroy it. See, to become a disciple, you must walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit because the kingdom of God must manifest in you and through you. Amen? Amen. In verse 16, would you read it with me? Uh, verse 17, I'm sorry. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That means it's your responsibility and my responsibility to constantly kill your past. And I'm not saying pet it. I'm not saying associate with it. I'm saying kill it. It's your responsibility and my responsibility to kill our past. This is how the devil works. Does everybody understand that? Until you kill your past, you will not walk in the fullness of Christ has for you. Everybody all right? Praise be to God. Well, the Bible says that we're brand new. Amen. It says that he was in Christ as a new creation. Old things have passed away. Then why are people still doing the things that they used to do? Because they've not killed their past. Is everybody with me? They haven't killed their past. Killing your past is a daily process. You may get by it one day and kill all your past, and all of a sudden, man, you wake up the next morning, and the next thing you see is the old man. And he doesn't say, good morning, Holy Spirit. He says, good morning, flesh. Let's eat. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5. Pray? You kidding me? I got to eat first. Oh, you flesh creature, you. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. How many of y'all want to walk in the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit? How many of y'all want signs and wonders? It's time. Then you know what you got to do? What do you got to do? Kill your past. I'm not saying pet it, and I'm not saying... Shake hands with it. I'm not saying acknowledge it. I'm saying kill it. Oh, hallelujah. Can you all hear me back there? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Read it with me. For you were once part of darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. See, as you continue to walk, you're learning more and more what's acceptable to the Lord, aren't you? Well, you know, your old man is not acceptable to the Lord. Not at all. That's called self. God does not associate with self. Your old man has nothing to do but me, myself, and I. That is self. He does not associate with self. Does everybody understand that? And verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness... But rather, but rather what? Expose. Come on, say it again. Expose. Say it again. Expose. Come on, louder. Expose them. Expose them. Expose them. And so many people, they see their past, their old man come up, and they go, oh, that's not exposing them. They run from them. They begin to sense their old man come up, and they pet it, or they agree with it. See, as you and I walk, and we get closer and closer to the Lord, your old man gets exposed. The hidden things begin more exposed and more exposed. It's your responsibility and my responsibility to expose the old garbage in us. Why? Because we want to walk in the newness. You cannot walk in that arena where the Lord says he is, he is in Christ as a new creation. Listen, if you're a new creation, if you're a brand new creation, that's a position, isn't it? That's a place. That's a state of being, isn't it? It's brand new. Everything is new. 
Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Anything that's associated with your past that you allow to run in your life, you nullify your new creation. Does everybody understand that? Because what does it do? It contaminates it, doesn't it? Oh, hallelujah. Come on, verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Say that again. Awake you. Come on, say it again. Awake you. Who, one more time. Awake you who sleep. People sleep. The body of Christ is half asleep. Arise from the what? Dead. When you associate with that old man, you're dead. Not dead to self. Dead to the things of the Spirit. And Christ will what? Give you life. Christ will what? Give you light. Oh, hallelujah. We were once darkness, blinded, servants of the flesh and Satan and darkness. It must be exposed. Exposing gives you the ability to kill. Expose your enemy and you can destroy it, right? Isn't that what the... Look at this. Isn't the greatest weapon of darkness deception? So we've got to expose it because once it's exposed, then we've got access to it to kill it, to destroy it. So you can't just nonchalantly shrug it aside. You can't just say, well, I'll take care of this later. You can't go, listen, I, I don't know if this is my flesh or a spirit. It's you. Now, the spirit is affecting you, isn't it? But something is stirring it up. Something, there's still an access somewhere. Listen, you know, you go to a fountain or whatever or a soda machine, you can pick your choice of what you want, right? You just got to do what? Push the button. Amen? And what happens? Bingo. Right? <laughs> and there it is. Oh, there's anger. There's hatred. There's this. There's that. There's whatever. There's jealousy. There's rage. And listen, when these things begin to manifest in you, if you really are looking, you see your past. You see yourself moving in your past. You actually can see it if you're really looking. Amen? Philippians chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And in verse 12, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, read it with me, please. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I what? I what? I what? Amen. That I may what? Lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. In other words, there's something more, isn't there? So he presses on, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. What? Forgetting those things which are behind. Say it again. Forgetting those things which are behind. Doing what? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So here he's saying, he says, listen. I'm forgetting those past. I'm forgetting those things. I'm forgetting it. I'm letting it go. I'm forgetting it, removing that focus on your past and putting your focus on the hope of Christ. Not on prophecies, not on what you want to do, but on Christ. Does everybody understand that? But on Christ. Killing your past. When you start killing your past, there are rewards. Is everybody with me? <laughs> killing your past, there are rewards. God rewards you for killing your past. There are rewards. I'm not going to go into all the rewards. I'm just sharing you that there are rewards. <laughs> forgetting, and when it says I'm forgetting old things, I'm forgetting the things of behind. Forgetting has to, is associated with something. When you forget something, where is it associated with? Your mind. Amen? Your mind. Isn't that where the battlefield is at? Your mind. So there's things that we're forgetting. In other words, we're making that choice to move it out, to expose it, to bring those areas that have hindered us, and remove it and replace it with light. Amen? Light of truth. Now, listen. There are things that are imparted us that are not going to leave, are they? You've got a memory bank, right? But see, the thing is, when the devil pushes it, when it's been killed, it doesn't affect you. You don't grab hold of it. You don't cater to it. You don't acknowledge it. You may sense it, but it won't go any further because you have dominion over it now. Why? Because you've killed it. 
and it's always trying to rise again. It's always trying to come back alive again. It's like knocking on its coffin door, you know, saying, come on, let me out. It starts throwing stuff and starts saying stuff, and you don't have to let it out. But if you go there and open up that coffin, you make the exchange. It becomes alive, and you become dead. Go to Proverbs 23. Oh, hallelujah. Killing your past. Proverbs 23. We ought to know this scripture by now. You'll probably be hearing this for a long time. <laughs> Proverbs 23. And verse 7. Glory to God. Come on, read it with me. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Say it again. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. One more time. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So, if the devil can play in that area, if you allow him that access to bring up the old man, this is where he's at, isn't he? He's playing right here. And then what he does is then he causes you as you think so you are. How many times has the devil said to you, man, you really blew it and uh, you'll never get it back now. Next thing, oppression. Uh-huh. What did you do? You just touched and agree with it? You acknowledged it? How many times were you out there and you backslidden and it took you a long time to try and you knew what the right thing to do is, but you just couldn't do it because of those demons of pride, because of those demons that were hindering you. But you knew what the right thing to do was, but you just couldn't do it. You couldn't make that confession. Why? Because as a man thinks, he so he what? Oh, the devil had it all control. And that old man took over and the new man became dead. The new man came off the cross and the old man rose. So as a man thinks... So he what? Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Let me tell you, the devil loves to eat and drink with you. He loves to perk up that old man. He's trying to get you to open up that coffin. Does everybody understand that? He does not want your past dead. Because he knows if, he's got, if your past is dead, he doesn't have access to you. So he's always going to try and bring alive. He's going to try and resurrect that past somehow. How many times have you run into somebody from your past? And man, you just get a sense through you like, whoa. I mean, all of a sudden, all of these memories, and you're going, oh, and casting down, you're doing the right thing. You know, you're doing the right thing. You're killing, you're, no, get down. It's like beating down that dog. Down, boy, down. Get in that coffin and stay in there. Don't let them come alive. You got to keep your past dead, and you constantly got to kill it. Oh, hallelujah. Forgetting your past, not to indulge in the past, especially of the wicked pleasures. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Simple, quick teaching tonight, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Praise be to God. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? Would you highlight that word war? You're in a war. Verse 3. You're in a war. Who are you warned against? The powers of darkness. What are they trying to do? They're trying to bring your old man back alive. See, because if the old man comes alive, they can take him to hell. Verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal or natural, but they're mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. They're lies, aren't they? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ and being ready to what? Punish. What's that word? Punish? punish? That means kill. Kill. Destroy. All disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What is your fulfilling of your obedience? Taking your authority and dominion. Does everybody understand that? Taking your authority and your dominion. And the dominion God has given you. Taking your authority. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, let me share something with you. If you're not walking right with God, you're not going to have dominion. Amen? And if you're still doing the things that you want to do and so forth, the devil knows that. He can see it. He knows that there's not obedience. He knows what's what. He knows that you're not walking in where God's told you to do or what he's told you to do. He knows. He knows it. And he knows he has access. He knows he can push any one of those buttons to trigger the old man real quick. Why? Because the anointing, the power, and the presence of God is not there in the fullness. He knows. He can see it. Obedience brings the power of God. Amen? Disobedience brings the power of Satan. So there will always be some kind of power there. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me share something with you. Strongholds are memory lies. They are inherited. Listen, they are inherited. There are those memory strongholds that are inherited, experienced, and portrayed by outside sources. Or let me say influenced by outside sources. Three things. These strongholds are inherited, they are experienced, and they're influenced by outside sources. And what I mean by experience through your circumstances. It could create a stronghold. Strongholds are memory lies, and they are inherited, experienced, portrayed by outside sources. Does everybody understand that? Amen? And we're supposed to punish them, destroy them, or kill them. But first they must be exposed. Because you can't kill something that's not exposed. See, so God allows us to go through circumstances so they can be exposed. Because if we're not willing to look ourselves, I don't want to see that. You kidding? I'm not taking that counsel. I'm going to do it my way still. No way. I'm going to still do it my way. I'm going to still do it my way. Oh, oh, oh. Bouncing off of everything. I'm going to still do it my way. person's blinded. See, when the devil can blind you, he brings you another vision. And then you think it's God. And it's not. Why? Because you reject the counsel, the office. Or you drink the counsel from the Holy Spirit. Now, he knows if he can do that, then what he does is he blinds you. Then he convinces you that what you're receiving is from God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And it's not God. Because God doesn't interrupt himself. Hello. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Yeah. What are we going to do? Kill our past. You know, there are individuals that have to have somebody in their life. That's because of their past. I've got to have somebody. I've got to have somebody in my life. Your past is not dead. Hello? Yes, but God says... Yes, but God says... No, what's your flesh say? In fact, Paul said, even if you're married... Hello? Even if you're married, you're really not married. Because time is too short. Make it as though you're not married, but still honor your wife and your spouses. Does everybody understand that? Too bad. <laughs> Too bad if you don't understand that. <laughs> but, but, you know, you think about it. Come on, everybody in the world wants somebody. Then when they get them, they can't stand them. <laughs> and then they look for the other, somebody else. All right, I'm done with this rag. <laughs> right? It happens in the body of Christ, too. Everybody has to have somebody. That's an old man. And if that's not dead, you won't be able to serve God according to the way he wants you to. You've got to come to a place where that is dead, where you don't even want it anymore. And then God has to make you get married. Okay, everybody can wake up now. You're not putting that one under the seat. Love at first lust. They actually lost at first sight. She's the one. He's the one. Ah, God showed me. I got to have somebody. Where are we at anyways? Second Corinthians what? Thank you. That wasn't on my notes. So. For those of you that are struggling with somebody. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Thank you. Therefore, hallelujah, come on, read it with me. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Well, we do not look at the things which are seen. Say it again. We don't look at the things that are seen. Say it again. We don't look at the things that are seen. What do we look at? But the, what? Wait a minute now. But we don't look at the things that are seen, but what? The things that are what? Not seen. And that's one of the problems. Everybody's looking at things that are seen. 
and said the things that are not seen. That's why they lose the battle. See, they're not acknowledging these things that are past, that are these spirits that are coming in and pushing these buttons to execute life. <laughs> Hello? Your life. They're trying to raise that old man to come up and kill you. Everybody understand that? They're trying to kill you. Because that old man's not dead. Your past must be killed. Must be killed. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Reality is not seen. Reality is not seen. That is not reality. It may be tangible, it may be touchable, it may be feelable, but it's not reality. Reality is unseen. Because the problem is people don't realize what the effect is from the spirit realm. The things that are not seen is what's affecting the things that are seen. Hello? See, they're not looking beyond. They're too busy looking at what's seen. But they're not realizing or discerning the things that are not seen. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? They're destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. One of the things we've got to recognize is that you're not fighting flesh and blood. Everything that's triggered is being triggered by darkness, but the triggering is the old man that's coming up. Hello? Because it's not dead. Did everybody get that? Praise God. Reality is not seen, but it's understood and accepted. Reality is understood and accepted. Why? Because it's not seen. Why? Because you understand it and you accept it. You don't reject it. You accept the things that are not seen. Does everybody understand that? That becomes a reality to you. See, discerning the spirits is to discern what spirit is motivating the human spirit. What is the motivation of the human spirit? Who's motivating it? That's reality. That is true, tangible reality. Does everybody understand that? See, but people are just looking at something. When somebody goes into convulsions, they're going, oh my God, call a doctor. They're not realizing what's behind it. Amen? It could be a demon. 99.9999% of the time it is. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's right. <laughs> Starting at verse 1, would you read it with me? <clears throat> and you He made alive. You He made alive. Not your old man. Who were, one, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to who? The prince of power of the air. Say it. The prince of the power of the air. Well, what is the prince of the power of the air? Amen. You know what the word breath means? Spirit, Prince of Power of the Air. Man, let me tell you, the Prince of Power of the Air, he's just throwing all kinds of stuff. There are demons, they're associated with demons, shadows, whatever you want to call them. Voices, the Prince of Power of the Air. It's amazing, and you can sit and talk to a believer, you can ask him, when's the last time the devil said anything? He hasn't said anything to me in a while. Really? He just did. <laughs> you lying devil. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit, who now works in the sons of disobedience. So disobedience is associated with the spirit, isn't it? Hmm. Called the prince of the power of the air. The Antichrist, or a certain specific demon could be hitting you, whatever. Among whom also we all once conducted, conducted, conducted. That means your conduct. Ourselves in the what? Lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is enriched in His mercy because of His great love, with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Prince of power, air, spirits, breath. They impress, don't they? They impress and try to express through you. Let me share something with you. Source, the source of temptations are the associations of your past. Come on, get it. The source of your temptations are the associations of your past. The devil can't tempt you on anything that you don't know already. 
He can't tempt you on anything. The source of your temptations are your associations of your past. Amen? That's why the devil can tempt other individuals more than others because of the, they had more associations in their past. You know, he can't, when people get born again and stuff, it's hard for them, hard for the demons to tempt somebody with drugs or alcohol if they never drank or did dope. Not that they can't still get them. I've cast out spirits of nicotine out of people that never smoked. It was there. It's just a matter of time. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody all right? The source of temptations are associations of your past. Go to Colossians 3. Oh, to God be the glory. Colossians chapter 3. And starting at verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. It says, seek those things which are above. Seek them. Seek them. Seek them. What are you seeking? The other side. You're looking at the things that are not seen. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Well, you're seeking Him, aren't you? It says, seek those things that are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above and not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So if you're setting your mind on the things of the earth, then what's going on? Amen. Now you've gone in reverse, haven't you? So he says, set your mind on the things above. above. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life, who is our what? Our life. Our life, our life appears then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, passion, 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 and passion. Evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now yourselves are to put off all these anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Amen? Praise God. So we're to put off the old man and put on the new man. Go to Romans 6. Romans chapter 6. Help us, Master. Help us. Starting at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in the sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? How can we who have died to sin live any longer in it? See, if you're living in sin, then the old man is back and the new man is dead. Or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized in Christ were baptized to, into his death? Therefore, we who were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5, Romans 6. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. That we should no longer be... Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life that He lives, He lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen? Therefore, do not let sin what? Rain. Do not let what? What is sin? It's, a, it's the presence of evil, isn't it? So you're associating with death. Amen? Please turn the tape over. Praise be to God. Likewise, verse 11, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, therefore, and therefore, means you have a choice. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Say that, alive from the dead. Come on, alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under what? Then why does sin have dominion over individuals? Because they've not killed their past. 
Is everybody with me? Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Let me ask you this. Is a bad habit still from your past? Amen. So there's something you still love to eat, but you know it's terrible for you. You know you're not supposed to eat it. You know it's bringing death to your body every time you do. It's okay, you can all repent afterward. The Bible says, you defile the body. Hello? It'll kill you. See, the blood of the Lamb doesn't protect what you choose to bring in that will hurt you. It does not protect you. That's the same thing in everything else. The blood of the Lamb does not protect you what you choose to touch and agree with. Amen? So when you know something is harmful to you and you do it, who's activating? The old man, huh? Does everybody understand that? Okay. Got real quiet in here. Whoa, man. Glory. No flesh, no glory. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands knowing, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ, what? Depart from iniquity. Depart from what? Iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for honor and some for what? Dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the what? Ladder. And this is not a ladder that you use to build with, okay? This is your past. If anyone cleanses himself from his old man, anyone willing to kill the old man and cleanse himself from it, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. How many of y'all want to be used by the master? Prepared for every good work. And you better bear that old dude. Flee also youthful, youthful, lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and arrogant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. For you as a servant of new creation in Christ, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. Whoa. What about attitudes? An attitude. Is that attitude that you have now still the same as you used to have? Then the old man is still alive. You need to kill that attitude. You need to kill that attitude. Hello? Mm. I'll hold on to that one. Depart from iniquity. Iniquity is a representation of past sin. We've got to remember something. Sin means presence of evil, doesn't it? You want to become a vessel of honor, you've got to get rid of the iniquity, past sin, past associations with evil. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, hallelujah. Killing your past. You know, you remember when Saul had the encounter with the Lord... The Lord blinded him for three days, didn't he? You know why? So he couldn't associate with his past. Then the Lord sent him over, sent one of his servants, laid hands on him, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost, the scales came off, and he was brand new. He didn't go back. Didn't want anything to do it. Didn't go back to people, places, or things, or nothing. He said, man, that's it. that ain't me no more. I'll never forget that when I went before the judge, I wanted to tell the judge it wasn't me that did it. They'd probably put me in an insane asylum, but it wasn't me because, you know, it wasn't me. I was brand new. I knew it wasn't me. They had to put me on a lie detector. I probably even passed it. That wasn't me. I never thought of that. I could have got off that two years of probation. Daddy put me on probation. But I did escape the four-year mandatory sentence that I was supposed to do. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 30. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 30. Is everybody there? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. So come on, say it with me. I die daily. Glory. Okay. If in the manner of men I have fought the, with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Verse 33, read it with me. Do not be deceived. 
Evil company corrupts good habits. Say it again. Evil company corrupts good habits. You know what evil company is? Your old man. That's evil company. That's why you must kill him. Hey, this is the only place you got an opportunity to kill something. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill, but daddy gives you 100% back in when you kill that old man. Verse 34, awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. This I speak to their shame. In other words, get it. Get it. <laughs> old man is, past, is, is evil company. You know, you've got to remember something. Evil still reigns over this earth, doesn't it? Amen? Who's the ruler of the earth? Satan. Satan is still the ruler of the earth, isn't he? Go to Proverbs 18. So if Satan is still the ruler of the earth, that means that you and I are, now listen to this, we are actually walking in the past. Come on, let this penetrate. If Satan is the ruler of the earth, and the earth is all evil, right, is in association with the old life, you're walking in the past then, aren't you? That's what allows you to be light when you don't fellowship with the past. Does everybody understand that? Listen, you go out into the world, you know what you do? You see everybody the way you used to be. Why? Because there's, the world is in the past. We're in the future. Oh, come on, get that in your spirit. Do you understand that? So what's, trying to, so what's the devil trying to do? He's trying to keep you associated with your past. Why? Because they're dying. The world is dying. But you have made, he's made alive. You're already walking in your future. The world is walking in its past. Proverbs 18. Oh, get that in your spirit. That's why the Lord says they have no association with darkness. Why? They're the past. We're the future. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 18, verse uh, 21. Would you read it with me? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What is it? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So how are you going to... Now, this is very powerful. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Hmm. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So there's got to be a place where you begin... One of the things that we need to do, of course, there's three areas. Repent and renounce. Huh? And remove. We need to repent, renounce, and remove it. We need to kill it. Why? Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now... You can take that tongue and kill what is from God, alive. See, people don't, they just think, well, okay, well, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Okay, well, well, see, you can kill the things that God has given you by what you speak. And you can bring alive the things that the devil has placed there just by touching and agreeing it. Does everybody understand that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Go to Proverbs 6. Well, I just don't believe that. Well, you just spoke death to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 6, and first five verses. Read it with me. My son, if you become shrewdy for your friend, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger, you are snared by the words of your mouth. Say it again. You are snared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, and deliver yourself, for you have come into the hand of your friend, Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Hello? He says we snare ourselves by our words. You know, there are things that constantly are activating the past, and I'm going to share that with you in a minute. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You will speak life or death. That's what comes out of your mouth always. Life or death is coming out of your mouth. You can associate, they associate with the old man things that are speaking death. So you can speak life to that old man anytime, can't you? Once you touch and agree with something, right? Things that are associated with the old man that like to come alive, of course, are thoughts. Amen? Thoughts. Your thoughts. The way you used to think, like the old man. That's a representation of self. Thoughts. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, you're going to try and bring you a parallel here, a parallel. Uh, parallel here of things of the old man. Thoughts of the old man are always, always representation of self. Desires are representation of opinions. You got a desire? It's an opinion, isn't it? Everybody understand that? 
Zars are representations of opinion. Pro or curses are representation of inheritance. Conduct curses how you respond to things. You're either responding in the old way or you're responding in the new way. Amen? Your thoughts are either of the new or they are the old of self. Your desires are the desires of Christ or the opinions of the old. Your conduct is the conduct of Christ or, how you, or how, either how you respond from the old or how you are responding in the new. Soul ties are lust. That's a big open door, soul ties. Very, very big open door. Some people can't get the picture of that person out of their mind, no matter what it is. That's a soul tie. Soul ties are associated with lust. Lust just is not just always sexual. Do you understand that? Lust is something that you just got to have or you can't let go of. That's a lust. False hopes are associated with delusions. Delusions. And pride is associated with what somebody speaks or how they speak. Is everybody with me? Do I need to repeat those? Hallelujah. Thoughts are associated with self. Desires are associated with opinions. Curses are associated with inheritance. Because you know what? Even if it's an inherited curse, let's just say you do something now, it goes down your family line, doesn't it? So it's an inheritance, isn't it? Whether it's come down to you or you're bringing it down to somebody else. Conduct is association with how you respond. How you respond. Are you responding according to the old man or the new man? Soul ties are lust. False hopes are delusions. Ephesians chapter 5, I think. Ephesians chapter 5. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. Verse starting at verse 1 through 7. Would you read it with me? Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Chapter two and verse twenty one. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her wallowing in a mire. So we see that God calls us a dog when we return to the same things. Amen? What, what happens? Well, we actually return because we're eating those things, right? They were from the old man. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6. Oh, it's time. Galatians chapter 6, verse 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these will compel you to be circumcised, not only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but what? A new creation. I'm telling you, you must continue to kill your past every day. Do you ever notice sometimes you begin to act like your parents? That's got to die. See, that's not even you, is it? Because you just because we just said you acted like your parents. Well, that's not you. That's something brought down, isn't it? Does everybody begin? See, now you got to start looking on the things that you don't see, because what you don't see is reality. What you see is just like a, a the button getting pushed, and here comes the tangible soda or the fruit, 
It becomes tangible on the outside. Okay, wait a minute. But there's something associated with it. Remember, every reaction is associated with something. But nothing avails but the new creation. Proverbs 3. What do you got to do? Repent, renounce, and remove it. You got to take your authority in warfare. You got to bind and loose every day. Did you ever tell yourself to shut up? Man, shut up. It wasn't you. Hello? It's not you. That's a voice of a demon right next to you. Or in you. Do you ever have a mind that can't stop? That's races, races, races. Man, I can't sleep. Oh, man. Spirit of anxiety. What do I do? Kill it. See, you're going to get challenged. These powers of darkness are going to challenge you to know where you're at. Every time you learn something new, you're going to get challenged. And they try to erase what you learned. They try to convince you, oh, man, it doesn't work. Everybody tell them it doesn't work. Come on. Because, see, when you bind them, then they go, somebody tell them it doesn't work. Oh, thanks. (laughs) See, they don't want you to know. It does work every time. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. Read it with me, please. Do not envy the uh, oppressor. Who's the oppressor? Hallelujah. And choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, and he blesses the home of the just. Hallelujah. You want this house to be blessed, right? But a curse comes on the wicked. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be to the legacy of fools. I'm going to close it. Hebrews 10. <clears throat> so that desire is nothing but an opinion, isn't it? That devil's just giving you his opinion. Why don't you do this? Come on, you know that desire. It's been cro- across your path many times before. No, no, I don't want to do it. Oh, but it's very nice. Let me give you my opinion about this. You got to shut that thing up, muzzle it, bind it, and send it back to the pit. See, if you think it's you, then he has a right to live in this house. And he will take residence there. See, and that's all you need is a residence of one demon. That's all it takes is one. And you will be fooled. You'll be deceived. You'll hear from God and you'll hear from the devil. But you won't know the difference. That's where people walk in mixed anointing. It's a whole other teaching. Hebrews chapter 10. You just have to make room for one. Remember that old movie, Make Room for Daddy? Oh, man, I forgot you guys are that old. <laughs> Hallelujah. They should have said, make room for the demon, you know. <laughs> make <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. What did I say to those Hebrews chapter? Hebrews 10, verse 35. Read it with me, please. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. Come on, say it again. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. In other words, don't give up. Keep fighting. You can't give up. You'll die. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now but just live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Amen? Amen. Kill your past. Destroy it. You can't allow that past to run your life anymore. Associations, places, things, materials, whatever it is. The only reason why people want to catch up is because they're associating with their past. Does everybody understand that? Don't look behind. Go forward. Go forward. Don't look behind. But kill that past so you can walk in the fullness of Christ and the anointing that He has for you. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, we love You and exalt Your holy name. We're nothing without You. Lord, we bind our old man in our past, Lord. We commit it to You and sever every cord from it. Lord, yesterday was our past. 
Lord, anything that's been brought up to our and our present from our past, we break and loose ourselves from that right now. We repent for association with our past. Lord, we just ask for everything to be brand new. You take your rightful place in our hearts, our talk, our attitudes and conduct and our desires. You take your rightful place, Lord. Let us be an empty vessel filled with you. That the fullness of Christ and the glory of your power and the anointing of your kingdom and your presence and love would be expressed through these vessels that are here as we continue to kill our past. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.